In this lesson, you will learn the following. How to install and configure Cypress. How to write end-to-end -end tests with Cypress. The concept of command chaining, which is a powerful way of chaining Cypress commands together. Some Cypress best practices when it comes to getting elements. How to utilize before each hooks to simplify your code. These will also help to keep your code dry and from repeating yourself. We will also give you opportunities to practice the concepts you are learning in this lesson. If you get stuck, the answers are provided. Before we can begin writing tests for our application, we first need to install Cypress. Within the terminal, we need to enter the following command. npm install cypress-save-dev Now that Cypress is installed, we can open it using the following command. npx cypress open. Cypress 10 allows you to now write component tests in addition to end-to-end -end tests. In this course, we will only be writing end-to-end -end tests. Component tests will be covered in another course. Click on the E to E testing button to get started. We are then presented with a screen that tells us all of the various files Cypress is going to create and configure for us. Scroll down to the very bottom and then click continue. Next, you will be presented with a choice of browsers to run your tests in. In this course, we will be using Chrome, so if you don't see Chrome shown here, you will need to install it. After installing it, you will need to restart Cypress so that Cypress can detect it on your system. Select Chrome and then click on the Start E2E -E Testing button. Next, click on the Create a New Empty Spec. Rename the file to home.cy.ts. The reason for doing this is that we are going to start writing our tests for our home page. And now Cypress has created a test for us, and we can click OK, run the spec. Cypress has created a test for us that is written against our kitchen sink app. Now that we have our first test and know that everything is working properly, let's break down this spec file so we understand what is going on. You can find the home spec file that Cypress created for us inside of the Cypress E to E folder. On line 1 of this file, you will see what is commonly referred to as a describe block. This describe function takes two arguments. The first argument is a string which describes the tests that are contained within it. We are going to be writing tests for our home page, so let's update this text to home page. The second argument is a callback function. Don't worry if you don't understand what a callback function is. Callback functions are somewhat of a more advanced concept in JavaScript. If you'd like to learn more about them, I have a link to the MDM docs in the lesson article below. Next, within the body of our describe block is an it block. This is our actual test. So anytime you see it within a spec file, you know that this is a test. It blocks also take a string as a first argument and a callback function as a second argument, just like the describe block above. Let's update the string to say the following. For our first test, we are going to be asserting that the text contained within the h1 of our home page is correct. Finally, within our test, we see the side.visit and the URL to our kitchen sink app. The visit command tells Cypress where it needs to go in order to run our test. Our application runs on localhost port 3000, so let's update the visit command with our application's URL. Now let's run our test. Click on E2E -E testing, select Chrome as your browser, and then click on the home spec file. Cypress runs our tests, but it's throwing an error. Let's discuss why this is happening. Hey everyone, so I just wanted to jump in here real quick to discuss this error with you. Now in full disclosure, I've triggered this error on purpose because this is an error that you're probably going to see fairly often, especially when you're first learning how to write Cypress tests. And this is an error that I still see to this day because I still make this mistake uh, more times than I care to admit. So uh, with that said, basically what's going on is that we have a, within our side out visit, we're attempting to visit a URL of localhost port 3000. But when we run our Cypress test, Cypress throws an error and tells us that it can't find it. The reason why this is happening is because we forgot to start our local dev server. So anytime you see an error like this, you always want to double check to make sure that your local development server and your application is already running. So your application needs to be running in one terminal window, and Cypress needs to be running in a second terminal window. 
Now, if you see this error and your application is running, that means that you probably have a typo in your URL or you just have a bad URL altogether. So now that we have a better understanding of what's going on, let's jump back into VS Code, start our local development server, and fix our test. To fix our error, the first thing we need to do is open our terminal and start our application's dev server. Next, we need to open an additional terminal window in order to run Cypress. Whenever you have multiple terminal windows open in VS Code, you can toggle back and forth between them in this small sidebar on the right. If you right click on one of them, you can also change the color, icon, and name. This isn't necessary in my opinion, but it may help you differentiate between the two and could be useful. You can also click on this icon here, and this will open a second terminal in a split screen side by side. Let's start Cypress by running the following command. Now that our test is passing, we can begin writing our test for the H1 heading on the home page. Within our test, we are now successfully navigating to our application's home page. Next, we need to tell Cypress to get the H1 element on the home page. Typically, a page should only have a single H1 if they are following SEO best practices, which is true of our application. This means that we can get our H1 using the Cypress get command like so. After saving this file, if we look at the Cypress app, you will see that it has automatically rerun our test. Every time we make a change to our spec file and save it, Cypress will automatically rerun our test for us. This provides an incredibly fast feedback loop, which allows us to iterate on our test quickly and easily. On the left-hand side is the Cypress command log. This is where all of the steps within our test are logged. You can click on each step and see what Cypress is doing in that particular step. This is what is commonly referred to as time travel debugging, since we can go back in time and expect the state of our application in previous steps. This is an unbelievably powerful feature of Cypress and makes debugging and writing our tests so much easier. We will be taking advantage of this throughout this course and you will quickly find this feature to be an indispensable tool. Now that we know that Cypress is getting the correct element, we need to write an assertion that makes sure the text inside of it is correct. We can use this using the contains command and then entering the text that we expect this element to contain. Let's check Cypress to see if our test is passing. Great, our test is passing and you just learned how to write your first end-to-end -end test. I wanted to take a moment to introduce you to a very important concept when writing Cypress tests. This concept is called command chaining. Command chaining is when you chain multiple commands off of one another. In this example, we are using two commands, the get command, and the contains command. First, we are using the get command to get the h1 element on our page. Next, we are chaining the contains command off of the get command. In this example, the get command finds the h1 element and then passes that h1 element to the contains command. The contains command then checks to see if the h1 element contains the correct text. Let's now look at the same example with another command chained onto it. Note that in this example, I have formatted the code differently to make it easier to read. In the first command, we are getting the h1 element. Next, we are using the should command to assert that the h1 element exists in the DOM. Finally, we are using the contains command to assert that the h1 element contains the correct text. So in our example, the should command is chained off of the get command, and the contains command is chained off of the should command. I find it helpful to think of this code as a pipeline. Once the get command finds the h1 element, the h1 element is passed into the should command below it. Once the should command is finished and does not throw any errors, the h1 element is passed into the contains command. Hey everyone, so I just wanted to jump in here real quick to discuss um, some Cypress best practices when it comes to getting elements within your test. Currently, we're getting the heading on our homepage by passing in the h1 HTML element directly into our sci.get. Now, this is okay, but it's definitely not ideal. Now, the reason why we can get away with this for the time being is because if you're following SEO best practices, you should only have a single h1 on any given page. However, what if you're trying to target a div, a paragraph tag, a button, or an anchor element, or any of these HTML elements 
that you could have dozens if not hundreds of them on any given page. Typically what we see most people do is they will pass in a, either a class or an ID. Now this is something we recommend that you do not do and it's for a very good reason. Typically classes and IDs are tied to things like design, layout, or, the, or styling of the page. And the reason why we recommend you don't use classes or IDs is because they tend to change over time. So for example, let's say you're targeting a button element that has a class of button dash dash green. Well, six months down the road, you have an application redesign and now that class has been updated to button dash dash blue. So now your tests are gonna break because Cypress is looking for an element with a class of button dash dash green, but it doesn't exist anymore. So what we recommend you do, instead of using classes and IDs, we recommend that you use data attributes on your elements. And so within this curriculum, we're gonna use something called a data hyphen test attribute. And these attributes are exclusively used only within our Cypress tests. So this means going forward that if we do an application redesign, the classes change, the IDs change, it won't have any bearing or effect on our test because we're simply targeting the data test attribute that's only used for Cypress tests and it has nothing to do with the styling or the layout on the page. So now that you understand this concept and this best practice, we're going to jump back into VS Code and update our test. Instead of using the H1 element, we're going to use this data test attribute instead. Now that you've learned about using data specific test attributes on elements, let's now update our test to see how this works in practice. We're going to replace the side.get h1 with the data test attribute on this element. We can inspect this element using the Cypress Selector Playground. As you can see, this element has a data test attribute with the value of hero heading. Let's update our test to use it. If we save our test, we should still see that it's passing. And it is. Now you may be thinking that the side.get data test syntax is pretty ugly and verbose. It's a lot of typing and it's not exactly the prettiest syntax. We're going to clean this up soon and make it easy to work with when we learn how to use custom Cypress commands in the next lesson. So just hold on tight for a little bit longer. For our next test, we're going to be testing the course features in the hero section of our homepage. Let's use the selector playground to inspect them. There doesn't seem to be any data test attributes or anything very specific we can use within our side.get to get these elements. While we always recommend using data attributes whenever possible, sometimes you do not have access to the underlying HTML markup in order to add them. For instance, let's say you're using a third-party component library. Typically, you do not have the ability to modify the underlying HTML markup and add custom attributes to the elements. So what would you do in that case? We will show you how in our next test. Let's create a new test and add it just below our first test. Next, we need to tell Cypress the URL we want to test. Let's run our test and make sure everything is passing. Great, everything is still passing. Now that we have two tests, each time we save our file, Cypress is going to rerun all of the tests in this file. This is okay when you only have a few tests. But what if we had dozens of tests in this single spec file? Each time we saved, we would have to wait until Cypress finished running all of our tests. This is not ideal, especially when we are really only concerned with the current test we are writing. We can tell Cypress to only run a specific test by adding the only command to our test. Now when we save this file and open Cypress, you will see that it is now only running the test which has the only command on it. You can also use this command for multiple tests. So if you have several tests in a single file, but you only want Cypress to run a few of them, simply add only to those tests and Cypress will only run those specific tests and ignore all the others. After inspecting the course feature elements, we discovered that there are not any data test attributes on them. However, if you look again closely, you will notice that all of them are wrapped inside of a DT element. Let's use this inside of our sci.get command and see what happens. If you look at the sci.get step in the command log, you will see a small three to the right. 
This means that Cyprus has gotten three elements back. You can inspect this in even greater detail by clicking on this step and then opening up the browser's dev tools. If we click on the drop down arrow next to this yielded property, we will see that Cypress has returned an array with three different DT elements in it. We specifically want the first element to make sure that it contains the correct text. So how are we going to get only the first element? Well, since Cypress is returning an array, we can chain another command called EQ and specify the index of the element we want returned from the array. Remember that an array's index begins with the number 0 and not 1. So in order to get the first element, we need to use the index of 0. Now that we've updated our test, let's inspect Cyprus. As you can see, you can see that we are now only getting the first element returned from that array, which is the first feature, and this is exactly what we want. Finally, we can chain on another command, the contains command, to assert that it contains the correct text, like so. As you can see, Cypress is throwing an error. Let's discuss why this is happening. I intentionally caused this error on purpose to make you aware of the fact that contains is case sensitive. If you look closely at our test, you will see that I'm spelling the word courses with a lower case C, but the feature text in our application is spelled with an uppercase C. Let's update our test to get it passing again. Now that our test is passing, it is time for you to practice what you have learned so far in this lesson. I have shown you how to test the first course feature, but now it is up to you to test the other two features. As a hint, you should copy and paste the assertion we have for the first course feature and make slight modifications to it for the additional two. Remember you need to reference the correct index in the array and then update the text for the feature you are testing. If you get stuck, the answers are in the lesson article below. We have covered a lot of material in this lesson, and we are almost done. Before we finish, we wanted to introduce you to the concept of hooks. If you take a look at the two tests within our spec file, we are using the side.visit command in both of our tests. We can simplify this and put the side.visit in a single spot called a before each hook. This is a function that will get called before each test is run, which is exactly what we want. I am going to update our test to use this hook like so. Notice that we have only a single side.visit inside of this before each hook and no longer need to use it within every test. Let's save our file and see if our tests are still passing. Great, our tests are still passing. Let's quickly discuss what you have learned so far in this lesson. In this lesson, you learned how to install and configure Cypress, how to write end-to-end -end tests with Cypress, the concept of command chaining, some Cypress best practices when it comes to getting elements using data attributes, and before each hooks. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to test forms and how to create custom Cypress commands. See you in the next lesson.